Swift Walker, A Space Adventure, written by Verlin Tarleton, illustrated by Ravshan Karimov. Swift Walker walked faster than everybody. Even his little dog could barely keep up with him. He walked fast at home, at the park, and at school. His sister would always say, One day you'll walk so fast you won't be able to stop. After a great day in science class, Swift and his sister were walking home from school when he asked, Do you know the four planets closest to the sun are rocky, and the four farthest from the sun are like balls of gas? Swift really liked science, and he loved space movies. Well, I know about the rocky planets, his sister replied as she went into the house to get a snack. She liked science too, but she was hungry. Swift kept right on walking. He was not ready to go inside yet. So he walked and walked, still thinking about planets, until his feet suddenly started walking all on their own. His sister was right. They would not stop. Before Swift could blink, he was walking over the trees, straight over the clouds, and right into outer space. His school clothes turned into a spacesuit, and his book bag turned into a rocket-powered backpack. Could it be? Swift walked right on to... Mercury! Swift could see lots of craters and the whole planet was covered in giant wrinkles. Mercury was a lot smaller than Earth, but also a lot hotter. Really hot. Could it be because Mercury was so close to the sun? It was so hot that Swift could feel his suits melting. Uh-oh. Swift sprang into action. He jumped so high he landed on... Venus. Venus was covered in volcanoes and rocks made from lava. When he looked up, he saw thick clouds that looked like a big fluffy blanket. It was hot and the air was so heavy, Swift could barely move. Swift powered up his jetpack and zoomed away past Earth all the way to... Mars. Mars was a rocky planet that reminded Swift of Earth. The planet looked red because the rocks had bits of rusty iron in them. Mars had two moons that looked like balls of clay. Swift was so excited. What would he see next? Just then, Swift saw a ring of rocks, an asteroid belt. He had to think fast and maneuver through them. That was close. When he looked up, he saw... Jupiter. He could see that Jupiter was a very large planet made of gas with so many moons he couldn't count them all because the great red spot going like a hurricane and Jupiter spinning so fast, Swift had to battle massive winds and hurled right over Saturn. Swift saw what looked like thousands of sparkling rings around Saturn. He could not walk there because his, this planet was made of gas, just like Jupiter. Swift noticed something. Some of the moons on Saturn were very small, while others were very big. Swift saw Titan, Saturn's biggest moon. Wow, he said. Amazing. He kept right on going. Soon he spotted Uranus. Swift felt the freezing cold coming from Uranus. Good thing he had his spacesuit on. Uranus had rings that were hard to see and not as many moons as Jupiter. Unlike the other planets, Uranus was tipped on its side. Very interesting, he thought. Swift did a somersault in his spacesuit right over Neptune. He floated right over Neptune's 13 moons. All of a sudden, a volcano erupted on Triton. Neptune's largest moon. Gas and dust flew everywhere. By this time, Swift was hungry. He took a gigantic flying leap and headed right back to Earth. For the first time, he noticed how much of Earth was covered by oceans. Then Swift saw living things such as plants, animals, and people. Soon, Swift's feet touched the ground. His rocket-powered backpack was his old book bag again, and his sister was waiting for him on his front porch. Swift, where have you been? she asked. Swift told her all about his great space adventure. You walked all the way into space? his sister asked. Yes, I have superpowers, Swift said. 
Well, I don't know about superpowers, but I bet you'll make a super astronaut, she said. An astronaut with superpowers, Swift thought. Wow, he said, amazing. Fun facts about our solar system. Scientists who study the universe beyond the Earth are called astronomers or astrophysicists. An astrophysicist studies all the stuff in the universe and how it works. A star is a ball of gas that gives off light and heat and is held together by its own gravity. Light, heat, and gravity are all kinds of energy, so stars are almost entirely made of energy. The star closest to the sun, the star closest to the the star closest to earth is the sun. Our solar system is the sun and all of the planets and other space stuff that orbit or revolve around the sun. Mercury. Mercury is the planet closest to the sun and has the fastest orbit of all the planets. It takes Earth a little more than 365 days to travel around the sun, but Mercury whips around the sun in only 88 days, less than a fourth of the time it takes Earth. Mercury is hot. Daytime temperatures can reach up to 800 degrees Fahrenheit. That's way hotter than your oven. And since Mercury has no atmosphere, it gets amazingly cold, too. Nighttime temperatures fall to negative 290 degrees Fahrenheit. Venus. Venus, on the other hand, does have an atmosphere. Venus and Earth are alike in a lot of ways. But Venus's atmosphere contains very little water and is mostly made of thick gases that trap and magnify heat, resulting in surface temperatures higher than 470 degrees Celsius. Prograde and retrograde describe how objects rotate or spin as they orbit the sun. Prograde means in the same direction as it orbit as its orbit. Retrograde means in the opposite direction. Venus is one of only two planets with a retrograde rotation. This means that seen from Venus, the sun would rise in the west and set in the east. Earth. Earth is the fifth largest planet in the solar system and the third closest to the sun. Of the terrestrial planets, Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars, those with hard rocky surfaces, Earth is the largest. Earth is the only planet with only one moon. The moon's gravity helps keep Earth from wobbling on its axis, an imaginary straight line around which an object rotates. And it helps the planet rotate in just one direction. It takes Earth 24 hours to rotate once on its axis. We call this a day. It takes 365 days and 6 hours for Earth to travel around the sun once. We call that a year. Every 4 years, we add one day to the year to balance out the extra hours that we usually ignore. That time, when February's days are 29, is called a leap year. Our planet is made of several layers. Earth's inner core is like a super hot giant metal ball, and the outer core is a liquid that flows around it. Earth's core is as hot as the surface of the sun. The next layer is called the mantle. The mantle is cooler but still very hot. It is made from both solid and met melted rock. We live on Earth's crust, the top layer, where all of the oceans and the land rest. The crust is the thinnest layer, but still deeper than we usually dig, about 19 miles in most places. Most of Earth's surface, 71%, is covered in water. That may be why it is the only planet in our solar system known to support life. Mars Mars is about half the size of the Earth and has two small potato-shaped moons. It is also known as the red planet and takes its color from the rust found in its soil. Right now, Mars is a desert planet, but scientists have recently discovered that there is frozen water below the surface. 
More research might help us understand if Mars ever had water at the surface and if so, what happened to it? On Mars, there is a volcano that might be the biggest volcano in our solar system. Olympus Mons is three times taller than the tallest mountain on Earth. The Asteroid Belt Look out! Between Mars and Jupiter lies the Asteroid Belt, a disc-shaped cluster of irregularly shaped space bodies that also orbit the Sun. The largest object in the Asteroid Belt is Ceres, a dwarf planet around the size of Texas. The Outer Planets Past the Asteroid Belt, you'll find the Outer Planets, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. Jupiter and Saturn are our solar system's gas giants, planets that are made mostly of the same stuff as stars, hydrogen and helium. But that were not big and hot enough to ignite like stars did. Jupiter and Saturn, the gas giants. Jupiter is the largest planet in our solar system. It is also the most massive. It contains almost twice as much material as all of the other planets in the solar system combined. Jupiter may have a solid core the size of the Earth, but at this point it is impossible to find out for sure. The great red spot on Jupiter is a gigantic storm, three times bigger than Earth, that has been raging on Jupiter for at least 180 years. Jupiter has at least 50 moons of its own. The four largest are Io, Europa, Callisto, and Ganymede. Saturn is the most distant planet that can be seen without a telescope. It is easy to recognize Saturn by its distinctive system of rings which are bands of ice, dust, and small moons that circle the planet. Saturn is not the only planet with rings. In fact, all four of the gas giants, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune have them, but Saturn's are the most impressive. Scientists believe that the billions of particles that make up Saturn's rings are pieces of comets, asteroids, and moons that, caught, that got caught in the planet's gravity and shattered before they reached the planet. Saturn and Jupiter have the shortest days, which means that they rotate or spin the fastest of all the planets despite their large size. Due in part to how fast it rotates, winds in Saturn's atmosphere can blow as fast as 500 meters per second. That's 1,118.5 miles per hour. For comparison, the highest wind speed ever officially recorded on Earth was 301 miles per hour, but winds on Neptune are even stronger. Uranus and Neptune, the ice giants. Uranus and Neptune are known as ice giants. They are the coldest planets because they are the furthest from the warmth of the sun. Uranus is sometimes known as the sideways planet because it rotates horizontally. Scientists think that Uranus is sideways because it was hit by something about the size of Earth a long time ago. Its, extremely, its extreme tilt means that each season lasts longer than 20 Earth years. In Earth time, Uranus' North Pole gets 21 years of daytime in the summer and 21 years of darkness in the winter. Most planets and their moons take their names from Roman mythology. But Uranus is named for a Greek god, and its moons are named after characters in English literature written by William Shakespeare and Alexander Pope. Out of the eight planets in our solar system, Neptune is furthest from the sun. It is so far away that even the brightest time of Neptune's day would seem like twilight to us. Neptune is also the windiest planet. Its storm winds rage three times harder than Jupiter's, nine times more fierce than any storm on Earth. Scientists think that Neptune may have a rocky core the size of Earth, just like all of the other giant planets. Neptune has no solid, sur no solid surface to land on, and the pressure in its atmosphere is so intense that it would crush anything that tried. 
Pluto and the Dwarf Planets Pluto was once considered the ninth planet in our solar system, but is now classified as a dwarf planet. Like planets, dwarf planets are nearly round and orbit the sun. Regular planets also have clear paths around the sun. Dwarf planets don't. Unlike a regular planet, dwarf planets' paths are cluttered with other space bodies like asteroids and comets. The known dwarf planets are Ceres, Makemake, Haumea, Eris, and Pluto. As you might guess from their name, dwarf planets are also smaller than regular planets. In fact, all of the known dwarf planets are smaller than Earth's moon. Pluto, Haumea, and Makemake orbit the Sun in the Kuiper Belt. Pluto is 39.48 AU from the Sun. That's 3.7 billion miles or 5.9 billion kilometers and its orbit takes 248 years. It has five known moons. Charon, the largest of Pluto's moons, is about half the size of Pluto. Haumea is roughly the size of Pluto and rotates a full turn every four hours. Its orbit takes 285 Earth years. Make Make takes 310 Earth years to make it around the Sun, but another dwarf planet, Aries, takes even longer. Aries and its moon, Dysnomia, are the furthest known objects in the solar system. Aries takes 557 Earth years to orbit the Sun, and its path takes it so far from the star's warmth that its atmosphere collapses and freezes, then thaws again as it gets closer.